Hello, everybody, and welcome to a brand new edition of Above and Beyond, Bridging the Gap to Accessibility and Inclusion. I'm your host, Anthony Fravina. And kicking it off today with me is Monique Taylor. Monique Taylor, MPP Hamilton Mountain. Monique, how are you? I'm great, Anthony. Thank you. Happy to be here with you on this beautiful sunny day. Beautiful day. And thank you so much for joining uh, us on the final episode of season five for Above and Beyond. Because you were a, an integral, integral part of how Above and Beyond kicked off on Cable 14. So I just wanted to thank you for that. And thank you for all your support over the years for the show and the and the support that you brought on our pilot episode back in 2018. That's exciting, 2018. That's a long time, Anthony. That's that's success. So here, cheers. Look at cheers. Ah, yes, the uh, the old You're logo right of above and beyond, and how we've Here's evolved. And uh, so, thank you so much for uh, for showcasing that and showcasing <laughs> really what above and beyond has really gone about over the years. I want to talk start uh, start talking, uh, Monique, about the disability specific challenges that uh, you've received over the years as MPP Hamilton Mountain. And any of the kind of the pushback from other parties, other constituents pertaining to any of the barriers and the ter determination to eradicate those barriers? For sure. Uh, that's a big question, Anthony, uh, because we know uh, currently uh, people are not getting what they need by no means. Um, and it's this government, uh, the conservative government are, is tough. And so it's a constant battle uh, trying to, uh, you know, fight for uh, safe, affordable, supportive housing. Uh, yeah, well, I, we had um, community living at Queen's Park this week, so I'll, I'll get into that. Uh, we see wait lists um, for for that same housing. We see wait lists for passport funding. We see underfunding of ODSP. Uh, we see the AODA not even close to being near uh, the 2025, uh, I believe it is, uh, deadline, right? That we're supposed yeah. to be in compliance. So everything is so far behind. So uh, there's a lot to unpack there, um, but uh, but people are struggling and, uh, and we need a government that actually sees people for who they are and where they're at and it recognizes and understands the needs and and they're not just simple wants their needs right uh that that people uh, should be entitled to in a place like ontario and you said it, their their needs uh their necessities yeah. for people with disabilities yeah. uh, i want to piggyback off uh, your comment uh monique with regards to compliance what really is compliance? And really, it more often than not leads itself to a minimum standard. You know, as a person who, is, who lives with a visible physical disability myself, you know, I'm not a minimum standard. I'm not one of quote unquote compliance as a member of the disability community. Here in Hamilton, that number is at 28%. Uh, so that's really an abundance of talent that gets overlooked and overshadowed. Just what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, well, first and foremost, um, you know, and they, they've had years to do this, uh, mm -hmm. to be able to get our community accessible, right? So uh, you, you, how many times have you gone to uh, get off at a bus stop, Anthony, and uh, you didn't have the curbs available to you, right? Or you can't get into the store that you need to get into. Um, or, you know, there's a building that, uh, that you know, just doesn't make sense. We've watched David Leprosky uh, tour the province, uh, point pointing out uh, things that are wrong, um, that are new builds, right? And so uh, the education and the supports uh, for our communities to become accessible are not there. So we see this as definitely um, not a priority uh, for, for, this, uh, for this government. Uh, kids in school, right? Accessibility means that uh, kids have the ability to, to be in school. They, have a, they, they can stay in school all day. They have proper supports while they're there. Currently, we have kids who are sent home, parents who are having to leave work every day because they, there's nobody to take care of their, their child at school. Um, making sure that and that there's just accessibility in in every direction that you know if we build an accessible world 
then it's accessible for everyone, right? Absolutely. And so I think that um, it's not been a priority, unfortunately, uh, for this government. Um, and uh, and people are falling through the cracks uh, because of it. And you know, transit, everything. I you know I know only too well. Um, now you you said you know talking about talking about it with kids, you know, laying the foundation and the landscape for future accessibility and what it looks like for everybody of all abilities yeah. and disability is really something that can happen to anyone at any time anytime you know and we, we talk about uh being proactive but more often than not we're reactive to a mishap so to speak can you speak to that yeah, for sure. We definitely live in a, a very reactive time uh, where uh, for years, right, this isn't uh, as, mu as much as I'm going to lay a whole bunch of blame at this current government because this is more than their share. Uh, we can't also, you know, forget that this is years in the making of not making sure that we had the proper infrastructure in place. And when I talk about infrastructure, I'm talking about uh, a workforce, right? Um, I'm talking about um, the teachers. I'm talking about, um, you know, PSWs and DSWs and uh, making sure that we have um, strength within our system to provide the supports that people need. Uh, so those those unfortunately, those jobs are very underpaid. Uh, they're precarious. Um, and, um, you know, they don't uh, you, people don't go into the, those fields uh, for the money. Right. Uh, they're definitely there to support individuals, uh, but it's it's sometimes not enough for them to be able to support themselves and their families. Right. So, uh, you know, retaining a workforce is is definitely a problem. And that that creates problems within the accessibility world. Right. Absolutely. We don't have. um people to be able to provide that support that's necessary, uh, then we're leaving people to, again, fall through the cracks. Um, and uh, and that's not OK. No, and 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 you said it. We're we're leaving people with disabilities to fall through the cracks, and you know our quality of life is being hindered by the fact that there's not enough support for people with disabilities. People that support people with disabilities are under funded, underpaid, and and the community itself just uh, suffers. Yeah. Now, what is something that we can do to to help that? Well, we the first and foremost thing I have to say, Anthony, is people have to vote. Yes. And uh, they have to actually pay attention to what they're voting for. Um, and I know, you know, some people will go, oh, you know, there's politics. Well, unfortunately, everything around us is built on politics. Uh, the the um the services that people receive, uh, the legislation that ensures that things are in place. All of that, all of those decisions are made by politics, right? And so, um, making sure that that you're ba you're voting and that you're getting you're doing your your civic duty um, is also a duty to yourself, right? And and to your community. And so that's one thing. Uh, but while we're in the middle of a government, because we still have two years out to an election, you know, writing your MPP, writing, uh, you know, sending sending emails, uh, talking about your issues on social media, so that other people understand too. You know, um, many people who who struggle, um, you know, there's a lot of social isolation, right? Maybe they're not they're not telling anybody their story. Uh, and and when I talk to folks, like I was sitting when I came home from Queen's Park last night and of course I got a whole bunch to see because I had a really busy week at Queen's Park um, with community living with um, Ontario Family Service uh, with CNIB like it was just a jam-packed uh, week uh, filled with so many great people and so many great organizations and when I came home to tell my friends you know about um, the state of community living uh, they were shocked like they yeah. couldn't believe that there was 14,000 people waiting on a wait list to get into supportive housing, uh, that we have aging parents who are not, who are, are fearful about what's going to happen uh, to, to their loved ones when they're, when they're gone. Um, knowing that financially uh, they can't, they can't manage on their own um, or, you know, or there isn't the proper uh, support, like human resource supports. 
uh, you know, to all of these things and, and people just don't understand. So I think when people uh, stand up and they tell their stories and they talk about the struggles and they talk about their realities, uh, it engages uh, the rest of the community to, to understand what's really happening and that, and how important it is uh, for the people who they elect to make those decisions. Right. So it's, it's a big picture. And I think um, many of us who understand that that need and that connection have to do a better job of of really making sure that we get people to the right place so when it's time to vote they're already ready right Absolutely. yeah like we're we're taking yeah. them there on the journey and so um and it's it's a really important piece of our communities that that people just don't understand yeah money we're gonna take our first break okay. we'll be right back with more above and beyond Walk past strangers' faces every day 